Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at some more Motown rhythm guitar ideas and this is going to be the final part of the mini series where we're going to round everything up. If you haven't checked the other videos out, go and look at those first. In this video, we are going to be taking everything we've learned so far and combining them to create some great rhythm Motown guitar parts. Stay tuned and I'll show you how to do it. In this video then, we're going to be taking everything we've learned so far, combining them to create some awesome rhythm guitar parts for Motown music. But if you haven't done it already, click like to like the video, hit subscribe to subscribe to the channel and click that alert bell so you don't miss any updates. Also, if you'd like a PDF workbook and the backing track that I'm going to be using in this video, you'll see a link below to a free PDF workbook and backing track, so make sure you grab those. Right then, let's get stuck in. What we're going to be doing then is taking all the information we've learned so far. So video one, we learned some classic rhythms. Video two, we looked at some classic inversions, the triad chords. Video three, we learned a few licks. Video four was the sixth lick. So what we we'll to be doing this time, we're going to be looking at practical application. How would we actually do this? What voices would we use? How would we use them? How would we play the rhythms? And how would we place the licks and that sort of stuff? So I'll start off by a demonstration. It's going to be a bit longer than the other demonstrations in the other video because most of the time when playing solo Motown music, less is more. You've probably heard that phrase before, less is more. It certainly is with Motown. Most of the time, as a Motown guitarist, you're just going to be playing rhythm rather than any licks. You're just going to be doing the stuff I showed you in the first video. So let me just give you an example. Here it is. All sounds like this. Okay, so I'll just chat about what I just did. So, first things first with the chords. I was combining these triad inversions with the rhythm. So I was playing one, two, three, four. Next one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That kind of thing, giving you more of the Motown sound rather than these big chords. Also played a couple of the fills that we learned. So I did that one. And the sixth ones now if anything again i probably played too many i think i did three or four in that uh backing track but normally you're probably going to do one of these every 16 bars ish i mean that's just again a very big generalization so less is more with these rhythm licks okay they're just there to sort of give a little bit of color here and there where the song needs it. Very much with the rhythm licks, stuff is dictated by what's going on in the music. So you wouldn't, for example, play these licks when the singing's going on. So you'd normally find a gap where there's no brass or there's no piano lick or there's no singing, and then you'd fill it in with a lick. But like I said, less is more. You never go playing stuff like that while a vocal's going on. If you listen to the classic Motown songs, that's not what happens at all, okay? So just generally, as I was playing through, I was generally doing the two and the four. I pick, maybe pick the three, the one where we did three, and then the lick to resolve it to the beginning of the phrase. So often the licks are sort of in the end of the phrases. So if in this backing track, there's four bar blocks, A, D, E, and D. And I was normally playing a lick at the end of the phrase to resolve it back to the one of the next block of chords, okay? So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, fill. Chords. Get ready for fill. And you might want to play another lick. Okay, that would be the very absolute most. If anything, as I said, that's too much. That's one every four bars. You want to sort of stretch that out a bit. Okay, so that's a key to a lot of this stuff then, is not play, overplaying the licks. You have a, quite a few licks that I've showed you amongst this series. Don't go overusing them one every eight, 
16 bars really or just in some gaps if you you know if the song is a bit more lively and it needs more licks go for it it's as much as i've sort of tried to generalize motown rhythm style obviously every song is different so you need to pick the appropriate rhythm part and also the fills to go with the song so some takeaways from this mini series stuff i've covered is number one the rhythm parts are generally fairly simple okay we're not doing loads of it's not that at all for Motown. It's very much just as we learned in the first video. Rhythms like that, nice and simple, and I guarantee it's gonna sound better, okay? You start playing and play funky stuff over soul songs, it's just not gonna work. Licks are gonna be little, as I said, not too many of them. Small, these small little licks, as we've learned and one max every 16 bars, possibly more in a chorus. The rhythms you learned in the first video, you can use those depending on the part of the song you're in. So you might play less in a verse, more in a chorus, for example. And also the other things to do with the style as well, as we talked about in the first video, is gonna be the muting. We don't want long, long chords like this. We want these little triads, short. really accenting the two and the four think about the snare room and look at the bigger picture of the song okay let's just have a quick talk about getting the tone the so the motown and soul tone often you see guitarists playing telecaster steve cropper for example a fender strat or a gibson 335 we normally would say want more single coil uh, sound for this so if you are going to go out and play in a motown band i probably wouldn't take my sort of heavy metal Kramer that's sitting there in the background or something like that. I normally take a guitar with a single coil with it. I find as well maple necks sound really good because they're quite bright. As I was talking about in another video, getting the frequency, that's why we're playing these triad chords just to cut through the mix a little bit because often there's a lot going on. I find the maple neck is a little bit better personally, not for everyone I know. I like this Telecaster for when I'm playing solo Motown music because it's quite bright and it's quite cutting. But essentially you want a nice clean, bright tone from your guitar. Okay, let's talk about amps then. So you want something generally smaller, one by 12, a Fender clean amp, a Vox clean amp. I wouldn't, take, you know, hedge towards getting a Marshall stack or a Boogie stack or something like this. Again, if that's all you have, that's fine. You can still play this style. But if you were, you know, really kind of getting into the nitty gritties of this style, you just want something that's giving you, give you a really pure clean tone. If it's got a spring reverb to get that classic kind of soul spring reverb sound, which is quite long and quite springy. If you listen to all the old albums, I would do that. So talking about reverb as well, if you don't have reverb on your amp, you can always get a reverb pedal. And the spring reverbs are generally what they use. And it's quite a long, loud springy spring as well that i would have used in these videos so you can try and copy that as well but spring reverb is quite unique to the sound as well it also fills up quite a lot of space so the simple rhythms that we're playing with the spring reverb you know it really just adds to the color of the tone so in a nutshell then when i'm looking to create a motown sound authentic i won't overdo it with complicated effects you know back in the day when they recorded these there wasn't all that sort of stuff available so kind of almost the more simple the better you just need a nice bright clean guitar a nice clean sounding amp and if you have a spring reverb that's a bonus and that will kind of do you know if you got if you do have a little bit of a drive now and again will help it wouldn't be anything too heavy it would be a tiny little crunchy thing on certain parts but not even on the stuff like we've done in these videos for these videos a clean strat telly something like that into a clean amp with a spring reverb is perfect for creating the motown sound and the final thing i'm going to say about this mini series and really understanding and being able to play Motown guitar properly is you have to listen to the style of music okay this goes for any style of music if you want to really learn how to play it you need to listen to it yourself it's all very well you know learning from YouTube like this and understanding what the guitar is doing that's fantastic however to really get into the style and understand the feel and obviously all the subtleties of the genre, you've got to listen to it. So just go out and put some soul and Motown music on. Listen to some of the classic bands and listen to what the guitar is doing. So maybe you've listened to soul and Motown before, but you've never really thought about listening to the guitar. You've just been listening to everything as, as a overall piece of music. Really try and tune into the guitar and think about what rhythm are they playing? Are they playing any licks? What's the sound they got? Is it a spring reverb, et cetera, et cetera. So really start listening to it. Put it on more because part of the really get the rhythm as well is the feel is where you're kind of sitting with these two and four chips which only really comes from getting that sound into you listening to it a load and absorbing it via musical osmosis and getting that real feel for the classic motown and soul sound 
Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video and that's going to be the last of this mini-series, giving you a small introduction into how to play soul and Motown rhythm guitar. Obviously there's a lot more to it than this, but this will give you a nice overview to get started with this style. Don't forget, if you want a PDF workbook and the backing track, you'll see a link below in the description. And if you haven't done it already, hit like to like the video, click subscribe to subscribe to the channel and click that alert bell so you don't miss any updates. If you want any more lessons, courses, and content from myself, come and check out my online guitar school, www.fretlix.com. Hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll see you again soon.